Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, we just went all in with Slayer. Uh, we made it up to level 63, but today I want to take a break from Slayer and work on diaries, and more specifically, do some skilling to meet the requirements for diaries. I feel like there's so many activities I've been doing lately where I've just been thinking to myself, you know what, if I had this diary done, this would be like 5% more optimized or something. And I've been slacking so hard on the diaries that it feels like nothing I do is efficient. Not that I care so much about efficiency, but like for example, if I'm doing Slayer, I don't have the Bone Crusher, I don't have the Ash Sanctifier, there's so many shortcuts I don't have unlocked because I haven't trained agility. And then to train agility, I don't have the Kandarin Diary done, so even just doing the Sears course to train agility isn't optimized. So we're going to be taking a break from Slayer for at least a few days to work on some skilling grinds. And as you can see, the first thing I want to work on is training some mining. There's a couple reasons why I picked mining first. Uh, first reason is because we have to train smithing for some diaries. And while we could buy the iron ore, I figure if we have to train up mining anyways, I may as well just mine the iron ore myself. Oh, this is new. That That's new amethyst area, isn't it? So we're going to collect iron ore. Uh, we currently have 60 mining, and if we look at the mining level up table on the wiki, you can see that we need level 65 for the hard Karen diary, and that's what unlocks the ash sanctifier. So we're just going to mine some iron for a few hours. I guess we'll go for level 65, um, and then just to check what we have in the bank right now, we have just under 1k iron ore. Maybe I'll put some grace on too. Probably doesn't even matter anyways. Oh, and the unidentified minerals. We have five of them. So let's hop worlds and get started. Just want to give you a couple quick tips for mining iron ore because I know it's a very complicated activity. Uh, with the Brock Armor 2, which is what I'm wearing now, although it does work with the Brock Armor 1 as well, uh, you have a 10% chance of mining double iron, which does give you double the amount of XP as well. I have shown this before, but just to really nail it in your head so you don't forget, uh, you could just use the iron ore on the deposit box and then hold down the hotkey to deposit all so that that way you don't have to open up the interface. There's 61 mining. Dragon pickaxe, which we don't have. And there's 62 mining. I do want to take a little bit of a break from mining because I want to eat dinner and chill. And I want to do agility. But you know, before I was saying how agility is going to be really inefficient, especially before we have more of the Kandarin Diaries done, each Kandarin Diary does help a little bit. And we could at least do all the easy tasks right now. So let's go knock all of these out. No way, we just got our third pet on the account after the cat and the pet rock and I guess the second cat that we have too. Wait, that's already three. And the last task we have to do is to talk to No Shirt Sherlock. And then uh, it should be uh, easy diary complete. Let's go claim the reward. Uh, as usual, I will put all the rewards up on screen from this diary. It's not really too special. We just get the 5% more marks of grace when we're doing this here's rooftop course, which I know it's it, it's really not like a big deal, but like it adds up over time. And if we're gonna be doing the diary eventually anyways, we may as well just get it done before we start the series course. And with the candor and headgear one, we do get double logs when we chop regular trees, which is actually useful for pest control if you just want to repair the barriers. Some people say that's more AFK, so you get the double logs from the trees. And then the XP lamp is going into herb lore for 2.5k XP. And now we're gonna go start training some agility. Last time we trained agility, we just got 60 from the Cannabis Rooftop Course, but now that means we have just unlocked the Sears Rooftop Course. Uh, the only three pieces of Graceful we have is what I have on, and I do want to go to Blast Furnace once we're done mining, so it's probably best to have as many pieces of Graceful as possible for doing Blast Furnace, because we are of course pretty far away from unlocking Staminas. Although Spook has been on top of the farm runs lately, um, I think she's been farming a lot of herbs, so I don't know how many she has, even though her herb level is only 30. Um, she probably has a lot of herbs stacked up by now, I imagine. And this is also a hard task for Kander in doing our first lap. Um, once we get the hard diary done, we'll unlock the Sears Village teleport, which we can use when we get to the end of the course there, and teleports us right to the start of the course. So unfortunately, it's still going to be really inefficient doing this course until we get that teleport unlocked. And honestly, by the time we get the teleport unlocked, I feel like we'll already be well beyond <laughs> even doing this course, but we'll see. Let's just do the course for now and get as many marks of grace as possible, and then keep on working towards getting graceful done. Oh, this is the first time checking the hardwood trees. They're all grown. They've probably been grown for like a week now. I just haven't gotten around to checking them yet. But whenever I do my birdhouse runs, I'd like run by them going to the seaweed just to like make sure that they were growing and that none of them have died and that is also a farming level. I've been trying to stay on top of the farm runs because we do need 74 farming for uh, I think it was the Kebos Hard Diary. 
There's another 7k XP drop. Oh, wait, we're gonna get one more level. And there's 57 farming. Oh, papaya trees. We also now plant mahoganies. That was at level 55, so don't have to worry about teaks anymore. Unless, uh, maybe I'll want to actually for uh, chopping logs before we have Prif unlocked, because this is really close to a bank. Once we get this agility shortcut, we need 70 agility for that. 61 agility. 62 agility. And this unlocks the shortcut in the Fremnik Slayer Cave. The one that helps you get to the Taroths and the Karask slightly faster. There's still one more shortcut in that dungeon though that we don't have unlocked. Oh, and that other uh, shortcut on Mount Karulm to get to Konar faster so we don't have to run all the way around anymore. Oh, dude, I literally just woke up and I was at this patch and I uh, harvested the herbs and then we just got an herb level from cleaning these. 56. Good morning, by the way. What a great way to start the day, man. Just getting all these levels. And there's 63 agility. That is one of the shortcuts, at least, to get to blue dragons a little bit faster. And with that, let's get back to mining. Still gonna go for 65. 63, 64. And this rock is gonna put us at level 65 mining. Uh, so we can mine Lovicate, which is what we're gonna need to do for the Kebos Hard Diary. Uh, but let's go ahead and check the bank and see how much iron ore we collected. We have almost 6,000 iron ore. And then as for the unidentified minerals, we have 48. Let's go buy another piece of graceful because we're about to do blast furnace. Uh, we're gonna have like the ice gloves or the goldsmith gauntlets on either one or the other or both, but not at the same time. And we do have the boots of lightness. Uh, so I think we'll go for the cape. Uh, it's gonna set us back 40 mod marks of grace. We need to get to 59 smithing for the mithril grapple, although we can get 58 and use the regular dwarven stout. Um, so for making steel, for steel bars and then one bar, it doesn't have to be a dagger, but like for each bar, this is the XP that we're gonna get in total, which means it's about 2000 steel bars we need to smelt and smith. And obviously we have way more than enough iron ore. So all we have to do is just buy coal from the shop here. I mean, we don't have a coal bag. It'd be nice if we had it, but um, we don't. So let's see how much it costs, 67 GP. And after one inventory goes up to 103. And I'll probably buy one inventory per world. If the gold's at full stock, I'll probably buy an inventory of gold as well, actually, for each world. Although, now that I think about it, we're going to end up running out of money pretty quickly doing this. But it's worth it. It's, it's going to be worth it, I think. Just please don't ban me for buying gold. Oh, and when we're running to buy the ore, you can see that our weight is in the negatives. But then after we buy an inventory, if we check the weight, you can see it's pretty heavy. So ideally, we want to walk going back when we have a full inventory and then run going there when the inventory is empty in order to say run because we don't have staminas. All right, this will be the last inventory right here. It's pretty crazy because almost every single world uh, was filled with the ores, just a completely stock shop. Maybe it's because we're just like too early in the game mode for people to really be grinding out Blast Furnace on their group Iron Man. But it looks like we have over 1200 coal and almost 1k gold. If you didn't know already, by the way, I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be specializing in smithing. I mean, granted, we both need to get quest requirements and diary requirements eventually, but um, for the most part, I'll be the one doing the smithing. The thing that's a little bit annoying is that if you don't have 60 smithing and you're using the Blast Furnace, you have to pay an extra fee on top of the fees that the coffer takes out of uh, 2.5k every 10 minutes. Although if you have the Ring of Kiros activated, you can reduce that fee by half, but you actually have to go through the dialogue of the guy uh, wherever he is. I should probably highlight him. Oh yeah, right here, Charm. How about 1250 coins instead? How's that sound? It's pretty impressive considering uh, he's a dwarf, you know, how dwarves like the GP. So I guess now we have 10 minutes before we gotta do that again. We'll just put all the GP in there and take it. We'll start with the gold and uh, let's get this going because we're on a timer now. We could just get the mithril grapple as a drop, but we need to get smithing up anyways because there's a lot of other diary tasks and quest requirements that require smithing. So I just want to get this done now. It also sucks too doing this without staminas because for pretty much the whole time I'm doing this, I'm going to have either the bars or the ores in my inventory, so I'm going to be weighed down a lot. Oh, there's 52 smithing. Just missed it. 53. I'll tell you the main reason why I like playing Resizable for doing Blast Furnace. It's because if you're in fixed mode, you can't just like click out of the bank interface. You actually have to close the interface first and then you can click outside of it. But in Resizable, once I deposit the bars and take out the ores, I can just click straight on the conveyor belt. I don't have to close that. 54, 55. I need to make sure there's always gonna be coal on the conveyor belt because if I only put the iron in or put the iron in first, it's just gonna make iron bars. So I'm gonna leave like one extra inventory of coal in there just to be safe. If you weren't aware, Blast Furnace only requires half the amount of coal that you would normally need. So for steel bars, normally you would need 
two cold, but we only need one coal per bar instead because it's Blast Furnace. 56, and we are done. We'll take the money out the coffer so it doesn't just keep going down. There's the steel, there's the gold, and it looks like this took about like an hour, just under an hour. We gained almost 80k smith and XP, and I'm gonna give some of these gold bars to Spook, maybe like 900 of them, and then she'll craft them into either uh, gold bracelets or gold amulets. Hopefully bracelets because they out for more, but um, amulets are more XP, so whatever she wants to do, and then she'll give me back some of them so that I can alk them and maybe I'll like do agility at the same time or something. And now let's start smithing all these into steel plate bodies, and then we could alk those as well, and then we'll get magic XP, and we'll get quite a lot of GP back from this. 57, 58, and there we have it, level 59 smithing. We can now smith the Mithril Grapple, and this is the group content you've all been waiting for, me and Spook Dog just doing our smithing together. The only other thing that we need to make the Mithril Grapple though is 59 Fletching, um, which right now we only have 41, and we have to get level 60 Fletching anyways in order to do Sins of the Father. Uh, what we have in the bank right now in terms of Fletching supplies, if we take a look here, we have all these iron dart tips. Oh, we need to buy some more feathers too, actually. Well, this is our whole cash stack now after buying these feathers, but we have a bunch of steel plate bodies to alk, and we're gonna get back to doing some agility here at the Sears rooftop, and uh, I'll alk the steel plate bodies and fletch these into darts. There's 68 magic. There's the last steel plate body alked, and we made almost 300k from that. Um, I think I did get a lot of these nature runes from doing Slayer, like especially from the Turot, they dropped a lot of them. Uh, but now we're gonna move on to fletching all these. And we're starting off with level 41 fletching. We'll see how far these get us. And here's an agility level coming in, 64. This timing could not be any more perfect. We had pretty much the exact amount of darts that we needed to get to 50 fletching. And with 50, we can now make maple shortbows. Uh, let's go ahead and make one of them because that's gonna be a task for the diary. And then we'll just string that. And that is a medium task for Kandarin. So we got from level 41 to 50 fletching, and at this point I still want to get to 59, and I think the main way that we're going to do that is with maple logs. Now I did start the kingdom, I think it's been one or two days of in-game time, so I kind of just want to go check the kingdom and see how many resources we're going to get. Okay Grim, first time collecting from ya, let's see what we got. Oh, okay, so it's only one day worth 892 maple logs. So we got about 1200 maple logs, and according to the calculator, uh, to get from level 50 to 59, we're gonna need just under 3k if we're making maple short bows. But once we get to level 55, we can move on to making the maple long bows. So we're probably gonna need like a little bit under 1700 uh, maple logs on top of what we have already. Okay, we're gonna put off this fletching until later because I wanna save it for when I need to AFK and eat dinner and stuff. Um, but you know, we've been doing all these quests, we've been doing all this skilling, and I think I said this at the start of the video, the diaries have just been lacking really hard, so let's just quickly knock out a bunch of diaries, because at this point there's still a bunch of easy diaries we haven't even done, and we're at like 247 quest points, almost 1500 total. This is embarrassing, man. Oh nice, I was getting this stuff ready to go do the desert diary, and uh, Spook told me that she collected from her kingdom, and she put a bunch of maple logs in here, which just so happens to be the exact amount I need to get to 59 fletching, what are the odds of that? So. Uh, we'll be able to get that tonight when I'm eating dinner. And then once I get 59 fletching, I can make those mithril grapples for both of us. Let's grab that. The medium diary done. And that should be desert easy diary done. Let's go get the reward. I'll put the rewards to both the easy and the medium desert diaries up on the screen. Um, but there's really like nothing good at all from them. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and talk to Jar. And then we're going to get the two XP lamps, which we're going to put into herb lore for 2.5k XP. And then another one into Herblore for 7.5k XP. On to the next one. Haunt DN Mine Goblin. What does that mean? I'm so confused. Can someone please explain? And that is Lumbridge Easy. Let's go get the reward. Again, the rewards will be on screen, but there's nothing really too useful here. We're just going to talk to Hades because they ain't us. Going to get the diary lamp. And then it's going to be 2.5k more Herblar XP. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the medium diary done because there's one task that we can't do, and take a wild guess at what that is. Grapple across the River Lum. We just need to get the Myth Grapple, and we'll finish this later. Yo, this guy's name is Spot, but with a B, and he's a werewolf. Get it? Because, like, Spot's a dog's name and werewolf. Spook can tell you more about it. For the diary, we have to grab a Slayer task from this guy, and I'm not sure if we have a task or not. Oh, we didn't. Okay, cool. Easy Diary complete. From the Mauritania Easy Diary, the only thing really worth mentioning is that when we do Slayer tasks in the Slayer Tower, we're now going to get 2.5% more XP than without the diary. And then the XP lamp, again, 
2.5k herblar xp we got to open the crystal chest for the diary and i have collected at least a couple keys from doing slayer so we can open this up and we'll get the very first dragonstone on the account and another half oh i wonder if this is what the mine goblin guy meant before we're at the mind altar but i don't see any goblins okay and that should be the easy faldor diary so there's the rewards up on screen uh there is something that's kind of useful out of this one the shortcut that we unlock I'll only open the mini map here and show you. We can use this shortcut here from Birthorp to the, the Wine of Zamrak temple. So later on, if I really want to get Wines of Zamrak, instead of like running from Faldor, I can use the Games Necklace teleport and then run from there and that'd be a lot faster. And of course the XP lamp for Herblore, 2.5k XP. Wow, we are really <laughs> one XP off from the level. Oh, look, there they are, the gold bracelets. Thank you, Spook. So now when I'm going around doing all these diaries, I can uh, get some magic XP and make some of that GP back. Gold bracelets out for 330 each, and then the cost of the nature rune, if I buy it from the Wizards Guild, it's on average like 190 to 200 GP each. So we profit like over 130 GP per elk. Then again, I did spend a lot of money on the gold ore, but we're not gonna talk about that. Well, we had to do skipping the Mogers for the Faldor medium diary and like assuming you have all the items on you you don't even have to do anything you just talk to him like three times in a row essentially and then you have it done okay well that was pretty much the last task for the foul or medium diary except for take a wild guess the mithril grapple so we'll finish this diary later too see fire making does have a very important use in the game it allows you to use the balloon transport system and people say it's a pointless skill Psh. Oh right, I forgot we were 1 XP to level, I uh, I made the potion for the diary and there's 57 herb lore. Oh, we need that for fairy tale too, I guess we could finish that quest whenever now. While we're here, and because we have more GP, we should probably stock up on the nature runes and law runes. Every single world is pretty much sold out of the nature runes, so I had to pay a bit of a premium to get what I have now, but I don't want to waste any time hopping worlds buying more when they're all like low stock. I guess I could go to Ali, but that just takes a while. Hey, there's the last easy task done for Karamja. Bro, look at that name. That's so sick. I'm so glad we got lucky with getting the gout tuber because uh, we need that for the Karamja medium task, which we have. And there we go. That was the last task for the medium diary. I'll put the rewards for both diaries up on the screen. And I think the main perk actually comes from the easy diary. Well, it's easy diary and above. The fact that like pretty much every store in Karamja is going to be cheaper, either cheaper or you get more when you sell items to the shops, which is mostly important for buying the Onyx. You save a lot of tackle when you're wearing the Karamja gloves one or above. And then fun fact about the Karamja diary uh, this was the only diary that was in the game when old school was released all the other diaries didn't come out until march of 2015 and because of that the xp lamps are a little bit different we get a uh, 1k for the easy diary and then for the medium diary we get 5k xp can you believe this is actually my first time entering the farming guild on this account yo wait that first did they really name a song that it <laughs> Cool, we uh, turn the intelligence and that's the last task for Karen Medium. You know the deal, there's the rewards up on the screen. And uh, from this one, this is actually our first time getting a blessing. Like we have the Raz Blessing 1, but it didn't actually provide any bonuses. But uh, the Raz Blessing 2 gives you a plus one prayer bonus like any other blessing in the game. So we actually have an extra plus one prayer bonus for our uh, AFK Catacomb Slayer. And once we're eventually able to do uh, Zaya Runecrafting, we will have a 5% chance to mine double Dense Essence. And then that's 7.5k Herblur XP. Alright, it's been a long day of doing diaries. There's still some more I want to do, but it's time to take a break and go do some fletching. We got 51, the goal is 59, and thanks to Spook, we now have enough maple logs in the bank. So. Let's get at it. 55 fletching, that means no more maple short bows. We can move on to maple long bows. We'll get slightly more XP. There it is, 59 fletching. This is what everything we've done today has led up to being able to make mithril grapples. I really like fletching here in Sears Village because it just feels really nostalgic because back in the day in uh, RuneScape 2, Sears Village used to be like the main hub for trading fletching supplies, like especially flax and bowstring. Oh my god, look at all those levels in the chat box though. It's so nice, dude. Eventually we'll get to the point where uh, we're never gonna see this many levels at once. Look, we got the dwarf here to celebrate. Attach all these to the mithril bolts and then attach the ropes to all the mithril grapples. And look at that. 
Yes, there's so many freaking diary tasks we can get done. Well, not like so many, but there, there's a few. Anyways, I'm gonna give two of these to Spook. I'm gonna go do some agility and chill and uh, leave me alone because I'm editing. Thank you. All right, back to finish up these diaries and grappling across here was the last task for Candor and Medium Diary. Here's the rewards. And I think the last two on those lists are my favorites. The 10% more marks of grace from the Sears rooftop course, then 5% chance to save a harvest life from the Catherby herb patch, so we'll get slightly more herbs from that patch. And then there's the XP lamp, 7.5k herbal XP, so close. And now we're just gonna grapple across here, and that is gonna be the Lumbridge Medium Diary done. With the Explorer's Ring 2, we now get three daily teleports to the Faldor farming patch. So I could, I guess, kind of start doing the herb runs there. I kind of haven't really done them in that patch. I've only done a couple because it was kind of far out of the way for me. And we could also now use that freaking shortcut, the one that goes between Drainer Village and Port Serum. There's so many times where I would just like try to use it and then it'd say, you need the medium diary done. It's like, frick, I'm not used to not having it done, but now we have it done and now I could use this dumb shortcut and another 7.5K XP lamp, which is gonna put us at level 58 Erblor. And yet another wall to grapple over. There is the Faldor Medium Diary complete. This one actually has some pretty decent rewards. The main reason why I was looking forward to getting this one done is for the Motherload Mine shortcut, which is really nice before you have the upper floor unlocked, and uh, more XP from the Faldor Farming Patch. And of course the XP lamp, another 7.5k Herb XP, another grapple, another diary as the Artie Medium. This one actually has really good rewards too. I mean, first First off, we get the Arty Cloak 2, which just has better stats than the Arty Cloak 1. With my favorite part of that being it has plus four prayer bonus instead of plus two prayer bonus, along with three teleports every day to the Arty Farm patch. So I can start using that patch too, because I was kind of slacking on that one because we didn't have like the free teleports. The Spideen drops and Tower of Life will now be noted. Increased pickpocket chance in Arty, which does not count for the Master Farmers, even the ones that are just north of Arty. And then more runes when doing Arania rune crafting. Okay, I think that's uh, all the grapple. Oh, actually, there's like one Karanja grapple task, but that was for the Hard Diary. I guess we may as well knock that out. Oh yeah, feels so good to be a, a grapple user. You know, ever since I got the Mithril Grapple unlocked, I've just decided to base my entire personality around the Mithril Grapple. Fun fact about the Mithril Grapple, by the way, whenever you use it, there's a 1 out of 25 chance for it to get destroyed. But we still have our original one right here. Actually, it's not a fun fact. That's the opposite of a fun fact. Speaking of fun facts, it's that uh, 2 a.m. me talking again. Oh, frick. Okay, well, uh, when I wake up in the morning, we should probably get these easy diaries done at least. Just to say that we have all the easy diaries done, but... For now, I'm just going to run a few more laps before bed. And there's 65 agility. Nothing like those late night agility vibes. Good morning, gamers. I realized last night I didn't actually end up using the XP lamp, so let's put that into Herblor. And then also got a book here for Herblor. Very close to the level. Let's go get these uh, last two easy diaries done. Oh my god, dude, when your character tackles these gnomes, it seems pretty unfair considering like how much bigger your character is. I just... I just flattened him. There's 31 KC. All we have to do is go claim the hats and that's going to be the end of the diary. The rewards from this diary make it easier to get the following Western Provinces diaries done pretty much. 25% chance of double chompy birds spawning when you're going for the chompy KC. And then we get the free ogre arrows every day. So if I actually go to collect those, we can just passively get that stack up over time. And then when I go to do the next diary, I won't have to worry about collecting wolf bones or whatever. And then we get the XP lamp for Herblord 2.5k XP giving us level 59. We can clean snapdragons. Okay, let's go do the Wildy Diary. Oh, it's so spooky doing the Wilderness course. It'd be a shame if people actually PK'd and the Wilderness wasn't dead. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow, it's a group Iron Man and not the PKer. What a surprise. Yeah, that'll, that'll show them. I'm a peak hair now. I'm also schooled now, so I should make sure to protect item. It reminds me of uh, Cerisus from Dream Mentor when you finally got him to fight and he just smushed the bug. And it's like, yeah, you're 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 doing great, bud. You you did good. All right, <laughs> dude. Where's all the peak hairs at? It's just like all group Iron Man, the Wildy. <laughs> well, the last task is to enter KBD's lair, and I didn't bring any runes with me, so. I guess uh, I'll just let him kill me then. <laughs> 42 to the face and there's the death. Rip hardcore status. Oh yeah, Halloween. Wait, did we get the message though? 
Well, that was the last task for the diary, so we can go get the reward. So we can now choose if the Wildy Lever takes us to Artie or Edgeville. So I guess that could maybe come in handy for something. Probably not, but uh, we do get, of course, the 2.5k XP lamp going into Herblore. And then the Wildy Sword, which, you know, is free and it is always guaranteed to slash webs. So that's it. We got all the easy diaries done and we got, I think that's eight of the medium diaries done. I mean, we didn't get all those done today. That's just what we have done now in total. I just want to show the high scores real quick as well. This is the highest rank or I guess the lowest rank we've ever been. Rank 22. We're so close to being on the front page, man. We've never, we've never been this close before. So there's all the diaries, the quests. We didn't do any quests today. And then this page, and then here's the stats. We're getting really close to 1.5k total. And now that I'm comfortable with all the diaries we have done, I want to get back into doing Slayer next video. We'll get 65 Slayer and get Dust Devils unlocked, and then Kurasks and Gargoyles, and we'll keep going from there. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel, which you can find the link to in the description below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.